Well, that's a wonderful question. I made a video, I think, when I was in... I have a video I'll send to you and all where I really thought about this question and I put like seven things. <laughs> uh, how to increase the love for the work, which would lead to reality because the work is bring us closer to being aware of reality as it is. And, um, but in a nutshell, some of the things that come to me I mean, to me, there is also that, that this work needs to be somehow, sooner or later, somehow enjoyable. The self-remembering or the meditation or the, all of this type of conscious work, it got to be bringing us some sense of pleasure i mean i'm not saying now i'll meditate to have this like mm, it's yummy and so i'm not talking about that it, it brings something something is right something is fed so a big a big motivator is that actually satyama that i'm allowing her to be my teacher now uh, she's saying hey basically god needs to be pleasurable otherwise <laughs> You're not going to be motivated. <laughs> um, also, I mean, you do breath work, you know, do some breath work, combine it with presence, then it, it, it's just, I don't know, my experience, it's like trans, I'm transported to this kind of clear, open space that feels good. So the the presence should feel better than the contracted state, yeah? But, but, but I get it that often it doesn't, or you're engaged in effort and it's not like yummy, yummy. And actually, a yummy feeling shouldn't be actually be a, like, oh, I'm practicing now to feel yummy, yummy. This is actually a trap for, especially for meditators, they get more advanced. If you meditate often and you are serious about it, you may feel pleasurable energies up the spine or in the head or... And so we go for the pleasure. So then what this is called a spiritual materialism, like a spiritual chocolate. We want some spiritual chocolate. And actually Francis was talking about that, hey man, whether the chocolate comes he would call it perfume, the perfume of presence comes, that's nice, but, but if you are in no man's land, Mordor, uh, just stay with it, the, the actual, the, yeah, be interested in the truth. Okay, uh, other things is that, uh, I think the, the, the remembrance of death, this is a, a shared by many traditions, remembrance of death. Uh, the Tibetan monks, when the monk will die, they will go on top of a hill and they will not bury or this or that. They will have the monk there and the vultures will eat it and then they will sit and meditate and look. And basically, so it's the opposite of what's happening in the West that we send all people in a house and nobody sees them. So... Anyway, this re remi remembrance of, of death, meaning that the time is limited, time is limited and the opportunity to grow your soul, your being is, is, is limited. So re reminding, remembrance of death. This can bring us to more like, um, it can adjust our values. Uh, sometimes some people who are wiser, even if they have not been doing inner work, but they get a diagnosis and some people are freak out, some people are in denial, some people, some people they are finally arriving somehow, some, some people, even if they are not doing inner work, there is a, something happens, the, the personality 
especially when it gets sick, the personality, you, there's, you know, to create a false persona takes energy. <laughs> and so when we are getting sick, there's not enough energy to pull out the shit. So one is more in essence. I remember that when I was in my 20s and I was in this in a school, and, but I was much more arrogant and full of shit while believing I'm really the hot shot, the big shot. Um, I remember that I had some surgery and I had this friend slash lover or something. And, and I had, I don't know, I woke up from surgery, I was pain, and I had pain for a few days. And, and she told me like, oh man, you are so much nicer when you are sick. <laughs> she was like she was enjoying hanging out with me because I was like it's just essence and more open and less bullshit um, so or you know you see people are you can know time is limited and then I think It's an extra, it's a third force, an incentive to, to realize that all this stuff I'm pursuing, it's bullshit. And so now I am more interested in pursuing the sunset, to really be fully, to see the changing of the light and all of that. And I remember I have a friend, she was a therapist and she got some serious brain tumors. And anyway, she found this out and I talked to her actually, I had an interview with her, it's on YouTube, like, I don't know, finding, meeting death to find real life or something. But she told me that, you know, when I found this thing, it's like, right away, also she was a little wise. She like, a lot of stuff that mattered to her stopped mattering right away. And she could see it, it was weird. And... Uh, then i don't know i talked to her she came to me and she was like hey man i'm having all these spiritual insights and i'm not sure what's happening can i talk to you so i talked to her and i asked her many questions and i realized dude you are having deep spiritual insights here so keep keep it up <laughs> but she was saying this thing that whenever she was going in the future or would go off the present she would feel fear and like and then she somehow, because it was so clear, then she was like, whoa. And she, the moment she dropped that imagining, she won't feel fear anymore. And she was happy. So it was really uh, so uh, remembrance of, of death. Um, I guess what improves the love of... Uh, of the work is actually also going deeper into a work second line, like what we are doing now. Uh, so meeting with other like-minded people, talking about the work, doing work together. This, this is more like, yeah, uh, going to, you know, retreats or going where there's only that, that will feed the part of you that is interested, you know. And I forgot now, but I have a video that I really thought about it really well, uh, about how to increase the love. Oh yeah, there's another one, is that we really want happiness. That's why I said at the beginning, we want this. And, and so the realization that nothing, what, what I really want is to be found via that thing I described in the meditation. So we are motivated by the searching of fulfillment. But we need to be somehow already sufficiently disillusioned by the pursuing the worldly pursuits. And ultimately, as we get as I mean, I don't know if it's ultimately, but as we um, we love being home, it feels better to be home than to be homeless. Uh, so there is the pleasure of being present. And don't think now, wow, I must be doing it wrong because I don't feel this pleasure and this or that. You know, you're just going through some natural phases. And in relation to what you said, Uspensky was saying boredom is a negative emotion, actually. Boredom is a negative emotion. 
uh, like irritation, frustration, you know, all of that, boredom. And it may be worth investigating that. Francis was talking about that, hey, don't stay with just boredom. Go see what this is because there may be other stuff lurking in the boredom. When I was working with teenagers in a residential facility, I had to be there. They were bored as fuck. And so I, I, I realized that, that if one doesn't allow oneself to be free to do what one wants <laughs> for some reason, either conditioning or circumstances, then there is a, one can get this flatness. Hey, I'll bookmark 